Hello, my friends, and welcome to the True. I'm Robert Wallace. This is a place where we ask, am I choosing the way of Jesus, or am I choosing my own way? We're continuing to dig into James chapter 2, verses 14 through 26, on action equals truth. And today we're looking at truth and how it relates to action equals truth. Oz Guinness wrote, we must not debate the truth. We must know the truth. If we would live free, we must not know the truth. We must live in truth, and we must become people of truth. Now, this is a powerful statement. However, let's look at what Jesus says in John chapter 14. In verse 1 of John 14, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In 14, Verses 6 and 7, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. And then in verses 10 through 11, Don't you believe that I am in the Father, and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. I want to encourage you to read the entire passage of John 14. And then reread it. And as you do, pray over it and do it again and again until you know the truth of what Jesus is saying to you and for you. When the truth becomes true in us, brothers and sisters, we will know God's truth is a part of us. When God's truth is knit into every fiber of our being, our faith will grow, becoming greater than we ever imagined. In Mark chapter 4, beginning in verse 30, Jesus uses the parable of the mustard seed to describe the kingdom of God. In verse 26, he talks about growing seed. The word of God, prayer, and faith all working together in God's truth will enable us to grow. In Matthew 17, verse 20, Jesus replied, because you have so little faith. Truly, I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. And then in John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32, to the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you really are my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Brothers and sisters, we have to be in God's word. We have to be chewing on what Jesus is telling us. We need to be chewing on what he did and allowing that truth to become a part of who we are. So here are my questions. Is the truth evident in my life of faith? Is the truth growing stronger in my life? When, or pardon me, have I been set free by the truth? What's the Holy Spirit telling me right now about the truth for today? Am I going to choose the way of Jesus that leads to a full life, or am I going to choose my own way? I'm praying for us as we carefully consider all of these verses that I've shared with you today. Let's go back and read these passages, let's read James chapter 2, verses 14 through 26. And as we do so, let's invite the Holy Spirit to give us eyes to see and ears to hear God's truth from his word. Let's have receptive hearts and minds to receive these truths. And then let's ask the Father for the same boldness, commitment, and courage of Jesus to do what the Holy Spirit and the word of God tells us to do.
I pray you'll have a wonderful day, my friends. Go in the peace of God. Blessings to you. Bye for now.